Hey everybody! In this lesson we're going to talk about probability and how we assess the likelihood of future events. With any oil and gas operation, there's always a risk with something going wrong. Equipment does fail over time and people do make mistakes, but we don't necessarily know when a hazard might occur. That is why we have passive safeguards ready and waiting to act. Let's think about this scenario. So what are the chances of overpressuring this vessel? I think it's unlikely. Okay, I think it's possible. Well, I would say that it's extremely unlikely. Let's move on. It doesn't sound like we're talking about the same thing. Even if it is unlikely, I don't think it's acceptable. We need to add safeguards. No, we don't. We always operate this way. I believe it's extremely unlikely. My rule is to keep it as simple as possible. I don't agree. I won't stamp this drawing unless we add a safeguard and make the overpressure event virtually impossible. Well, let's just add another high integrity shutdown then, just to be safe. Fine, I guess it looks good on paper. Just don't trip my plant unnecessarily. My guys will just bypass this after startup anyways. Even without any safeguards, the chance of overpressure is extremely unlikely. When we discuss the chances of something occurring, we typically use an internal reference and assume that everyone else has the same understanding. This poor communication results in conflicts that are common in a PHA. People get frustrated because they feel like they aren't being understood. How can we communicate our assessment of uncertainty so that others will understand and we can collaboratively make more consistent decisions? To communicate uncertainty and drive rational decisions, we need to use probability. What is probability? Probability is an expression of the chance of something happening. For example, if you randomly draw a card from a regular 52 card deck, the probability of getting a 3 is 1 in 13, or approximately 8% chance. The probability of getting a card that is a diamond is 1 in 4, or 25% chance. The odds associated with drawing cards may seem obvious to us, but for other events with uncertainty, it is often difficult for us to assess the probability. While we may have some intuitive idea of the chances of something happening, we generally do not quantify it and are susceptible to biases. Why is this so? Most of the decisions we make on a daily basis have a clear action or reaction. Or in other words, we have a high degree of certainty. For example, when you decide to go somewhere, you simply get in a car and drive, subconsciously assuming that you will safely arrive at your destination. We don't tend to think about other possible outcomes, such as fatality or injury, and less so the probability of those outcomes. Even though driving is one of the top risks for most people in developed countries, we naturally accept the risk. When we think about the chance of an event, there are two sides. The first is mainly concerned with calculations, and the second is about subjective experiences and perceptions. Good risk-based decisions require both. Probability assessment is always about the state of knowledge. It's about what we know and our perception in the moment. Let's revisit our deck of cards example. What is the probability of drawing the ace of spades? If you are familiar with standard playing cards, you would most likely say 1 in 52, based on your knowledge of what cards a typical deck has. However, if this deck of cards happened to be made up of only aces of spades, the probability of drawing an ace of spades is actually 52 of 52, or 100%. Your probability assessment does not necessarily reflect the actual probability because it is based on your own state of knowledge. On one hand, it is possible to get caught up using industry statistics as the basis for our probability assessment, without considering the details of a particular process or service. On the other hand, we are susceptible to being biased by our own experiences. Have you ever experienced a pressure safety valve failure? Probably not. We may have never seen a certain piece of equipment fail, but that doesn't mean it won't. It is important to balance these two sides when assessing the likelihood of something happening, such as equipment failure. 
After considering both sides, our probability assessment should be expressed with numbers, resulting in clear and ambiguous descriptions. This will help with communication in a group-based decision-making environment and ensure that all participants are making their decision on the same basis. Let's revisit the scenario from earlier, except this time we'll see what happens when people use probabilities to express their understanding of the likelihood of an event. So what is the probability of overpressuring this vessel? The probability of overpressure is extremely low. I have never seen it happen in my career. Well, let's break down the sequence of events and the probability of each. So starting with the failure mode that initiates the abnormal process condition, which would be the valve closing. I think this can happen a few times in the life of the plant. If the life of the plant is 30 years, how does that translate into a percentage in a given year? I'd say it's about 10% chance per year. Great. Does operation agree? Yeah, that sounds right to me. I remember a few of these failures happening before. I think it's reasonable as well, based on industry statistics. So, without safeguards, the chance of overpressure is 10% per year. We have a PSV on the vessel. Is the PSV clean or dirty service? It's clean service. There are no contaminants coming into the vessel. Based on industry guidelines, the chance of the PSV not relieving pressure is 1%. Our corporate standard says we need to get to a 1 in 10,000 chance for this overpressure event. Well then, the current design is 10 times more likely of overpressure than acceptable. Hmm. By adding a high pressure shutdown, we can reduce the risk by a factor of 10, right? Depending on the hardware and maintenance, but yes, it's achievable. Okay. We'll design this so that it's at least 90% reliable and provide operation with a maintenance schedule. Good. Now, this scenario is a 1 in 10,000 chance event. Alright, that makes sense. So, it looks like overpressure is now extremely unlikely. Okay, good discussion. This is a strong logical argument. Let's move on. With a good facilitator to guide the discussion, a team can understand what needs to happen for a consequence to occur and the probabilities associated with each step. This will bring them to a realistic probability assessment, which can be used to evaluate the risk.